Hello again. I spoke earlier this morning about the commonly observed fact that few black people are to be seen when one visits museums. This is only one facet, though, of a far wider phenomenon which amounts in effect to a boycott of British cultural life by black people and those of South Asian origin. It doesn't matter whether you are talking about visiting a castle, going to Kew Gardens, watching a play or any other event of the kind which draws many families, the truth is such things are almost exclusively white affairs. Of course, this has been noticed and attributed to, what else, institutional racism. This is why funding is sometimes withheld from things like mountain rescue teams. All the people they rescue are white. That looks lousy on the monitoring forms when you're applying for a grant that all your clients are white. One or two examples will help put this in context. London has no shortage of black people and Asians, and yet wherever I go at weekends, I don't encounter them. <coughs> this isn't because I'm some sort of fanatical racist who avoids black people like the plague. I go to all kinds of places, and also did so when my daughter was young and I was educating her at home. In the last couple of months, I've been to Kew Gardens, the Tower of London, the Museum of London, London Zoo, and various other places of the kind which parents and families visit. All those sites had an almost exclusively white clientele. There was nothing to stop black people or Pakistani Muslims going to them, but they won't do so. I've mentioned recently the Jeffrey Museum in Hackney, now known as the Museum of the Home, this is in the middle of a black area, and yet the only black people you see there are the staff. As I say, this is right in the heart of Hackney. No black person seems to think it worth taking their kids there at the weekends, the way that white parents do. Even more intriguingly, just a short walk from that museum is Hackney City Farm. This place is completely free to visit and used to be a favourite when my daughter was small. She actually saw a sheep giving birth there when she was five or six, which is a fantastic learning experience for a kid growing up in the city. They have sheep, pigs, donkeys, chickens and so on, and kids can just wander around looking at the animals really close up, stroking, petting and feeding them. Again, this is a white pastime. They had trouble years ago with their grant for this reason because of the lack of diversity. It is in the middle of an area of council estates in, in London with a majority population of visible minorities and yet none of them take their kids to see the animals there. Why is that? If one visits the local gyms in such areas, there are plenty of black people to be found and I don't think that lack of money is at the root of the difficulty. Many of the attractions I know of, museums and city farms, for example, are free. Epping Forest is just round the corner from me, and people come from all over London to walk and ride bikes through the forest every weekend. White people, that is. White families bring picnics with their children and explore the forest together. I cannot ever <coughs> recall seeing a black family in Epping Forest doing this. I don't have any answer to this conundrum other than to suggest that many members of visible minorities prefer to keep themselves apart from mainstream society. In some cases there might be religious motives for this, among Muslims for example, but this doesn't explain the lack of black people in Epping Forest or visiting the Museum of London. These people cannot possibly feel unwelcome in such places, so I don't see that as any kind of explanation. The bushes in Kew Garden are not racist, and many of the staff there are black and Asian, so it can't be that which is keeping them away. The best I can come up with is that black people do not like the same things in general that white people do. They prefer to go to places where they will only meet other black people, like gyms, 
and in London big shopping centres like Westfield in Stratford and Brent Cross. They are happy to spend money in such places rather than on trips to the Tower of London or even visiting free attractions such as the National Maritime Museum and Royal Observatory in Greenwich. I think then there is both a complete lack of interest in British history and British culture combined with a desire to rub shoulders only with other black people. I'm fine with that personally, but unfortunately many middle-class white people, those in charge of theatres, museums, art galleries and so, are not. They feel that it is necessary to do something about their establishments to draw in more black people. This inevitably means destroying the very things which ordinary white British people like, which I feel to be a mistake. I shall have more to say on this subject in a day or two.